hard to follow up with you uh, performers, you know. I used to, like, not have text and memorize everything like you guys when I, when I did this all the time. i got to start doing that again. Because <laughs> you're dynamite. Um, I thought since everybody is telling really personal stories... <laughs> Uh-oh. I would just go ahead and tell one. And um, so I grew up right around here in the city, PS41, around this neighborhood, you know, and um, I was, you know, one of those city kids, did a lot of martial arts. I did martial arts for years and years and years, and they made really bad cuts for a long time. Um, and I had different cups, and then I sort of, you know, over the years you get kicked in the balls occasionally, and your back gets fucked up. So I had this knee chair, I was sitting in the knee chair, um, it's 11.55 at night, and my wife is in the other room, and I felt this, I felt this really... <laughs> Damn, Mike. <laughs> See, it's you. <laughs> <laughs> so I felt this really terrible pain. I'm sitting in the chair, and it's so bad in my balls, and I'm kind of hunched over, and I walk into the living room, and I'm just laughing hysterically, and I'm like, I think i got to go to the hospital. Um, and we look it up online, and there's a very small chance it's this thing called a torsion, which is very unusual in a guy my age. But if you have it, you got to get the operation instantaneously. So I go up there from 52nd Street to 59th Street to the uh, hospital, and um, I'm in the emergency room in the middle of the night, and there's no nothing else going on there. And the nurses tell me that I have this thing. And then the doctors tell me I don't. And um, I'm lying in a gurney in this room with like 200 people lined up outside the gurney, coming in and handling my balls. And um, I'm on like Percocet. I'm on all kinds of drugs right now. And I'm still flipping off the gurney like in anchovy when they handle me. And um, the doctors are saying, oh, don't worry about it. You know, you have a little hernia or something. And the nurses are saying, you know, you're, get, you're getting operated on tonight. And they take me upstairs um, in the gurney to this. Uh, they, have to, they have to give you an ultrasound right away. Otherwise, you can sue them. So they're saying, well, we got to do this. You know, we got to hold you here and do this ultrasound. They take you upstairs. And now I've seen ultrasounds in my two kids. So it's this very surreal thing where you feel like, you know, they're examining you for your next child. And they put all this stuff on you, and they're, you've been, now, by the way, all, any boundaries you had um, about sex or other people touching your, your groin down there are completely gone. Um, you've been shuttled around the hospital naked just for hours now, and everybody is coming up to you, groping you. So you're lying around, and the, the doctor now, who's looking at the ultrasound, had, there are like six interns right behind him, because... It's, there's nothing going on, and it's the middle of the night, and this is an interesting case. So the, there's this septet of guys standing behind him, like looking at the ultrasound. As a doctor, it's this very elegant, like Indian man is saying, well, you know, you don't have a, um, it's very, very unusual in a man your age. You probably have a small hernia, and for a small hernia, they don't do anything. Maybe a, a very small, non-intrusive surgery. And then all of a sudden, he goes like this. <laughs> and all and the other six guys too who are behind him all in unison go like this. <laughs> so all of them just pull back at the same instant, and then the the elegant, you know, Indian guy turns to me and says, "Sometimes it just happens." <laughs> <laughs> so, so like the next instant. Um, he, this guy, like, who looks like he doesn't run at all, is running behind my gurney, pushing me down the hallway. And the six guys are behind him, following. And nurses are running up next to me, handing me paperwork um, to sign, because they're taking me into surgery. The urologist shows up with an overcoat over his pajamas, um, saying, there's one urology emergency, and this is it. Mm -hmm. And and the next second, you know, they're pretty much like 15 minutes later, they're wheeling me into this room, um, into the surgery room, and I think you guys will appreciate this this part of the story. He asked me as I'm on the table, I'm like, "Have you done this before?" Because <laughs> you have to have the operation instantaneously. It's not like you can go shopping around. So, 
So he says yes, and the other guy, there are two doctors, and the other guy's like, oh my god. <laughs> they each get one ball, because they gotta do both of them. They gotta stitch them into place. So, so anyway, the doctor then says, to change the subject, he says, um, well, what do you do? And I say, oh, I'm a writer. And he's like. <laughs> so then the next, so next I wake up. I'm, I'm in this, um, they, do, they do, do the whole thing. And I wake up in this completely empty room with one bed in it. And I'm lying on this bed, and there's a really unattractive, angry nurse about 50 feet away from me at a desk. Oh, wait, first, in the middle I wake up, and I'm like, um, I think I'm being funny. I'm like, Luke, help me take off this mask. <laughs> and, I'm trying to, and I'm trying to pull all this crap off my head, and I feel all these like nurses and stuff, and people are fighting me, and I'm like fighting them back, and they're like, Mr. Reed, Mr. Reed, please leave your mask on. So anyway, I finally got off the mask, and then, and then I woke up a few minutes later, and there's this mean nurse um, down the down the hall, and there's this like alarm going off, this really, really, really loud alarm going off. And I'm looking at her like, what is happening? And she says, speed up your breathing. Because evidently I'm hooked up to all this stuff, and if my blood pressure drops too low, um, you know, and I've done some sports stuff, so I'm, like, I'm not like crazy in shape, but maybe a little bit lower than normal. So she's, she's like, you have to breathe faster. So I'm like, <laughs> and for the next two hours, every 10 seconds, this fucking alarm goes off in my head, and I have to breathe faster. So anyway, I get through that whole ordeal, and then I wake up, and I'm like the size of a football down here. And, um, and I'm like struggling to get to the bathroom, and the nurse is saying it's not a good idea. And finally, she feels for me. <laughs> And, um, and lets me go, and once I go, I'm out of there. But the weird part about the story is, and it's not really like full closure here, but what's interesting about the story to me is that it, they stitch me into place so they completely changed, turned me into a dog, basically. I used to be picky, you know, now I'm like attracted to every, you know, all these women. Um, <laughs> they, they, you know, your balls are supposed to go up and down. You know, they just are so worried about it not working correctly after that. They're like, okay, you now forever, optimum position. <laughs> so, so that's the upside to the whole thing. Um, I don't know. Are there, are there questions? <laughs> so I guess I'll just, I guess I'll just close with that. Thanks, guys. Thanks. Yeah.